The topic of this video is graphing transformation techniques, reflections across the x and y axes. If we spin one of our basic functions around the x-axis, or the y-axis, what would the new equation be? We will discuss reflection across the x-axis, vertical reflection, and reflection across the y-axis, horizontal reflection, simultaneously. Vertical x-axis reflection. To reflect or spin a graph across or around the x-axis, multiply its equation by negative 1 on the right side only. Every point above the x-axis flips down below, and every point below the x-axis flips up. Thus, each y-coordinate is multiplied by negative 1. Horizontal y-axis reflection. To reflect or spin a graph across or around the y-axis, replace each x in its equation with negative x in parentheses. Every point to the left of the y-axis flips over to the right, and every point to the right flips over to the left. Thus, each x-coordinate is multiplied by negative 1. Let's look at two examples. Create the graphs of f of x equals x squared and g of x equals negative x squared. We observe that f of x is the square function and g of x is the result of multiplying f of x by negative 1 on the right-hand side. Therefore, g of x is a vertical reflection of f of x. This allows us to quickly graph g of x by multiplying all of the y-coordinates of f of x by negative 1. Let's look at the diagram. The black curve here is the parent function f of x equals x squared. We know its coordinates from memory. Negative 2, 4, negative 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 2, 4. But g of x is a vertical reflection, a reflection uh, around or across the x-axis of f of x. And in so doing, all of the y-coordinates get multiplied by negative 1. So for example, this one point on the black curve, 2, 4, now corresponds and becomes the new point, 2, comma, negative 4. The y-coordinates all change signs. So we get points on the blue curve, such as negative 2, negative 4, negative 1, negative 1, 0, 0, 1, negative 1, and 2, negative 4. All right, let's look at our next example. Create the graphs of f of x equals the square root of x and g of x equals the square root of negative x. Now, before we begin, a question that I often get from students is, is this even allowed? Are you allowed to have a negative under a square root? And the answer is yes, as long as there's also a variable in there. For example, if the value of x happened to be negative 4, then you would have two negatives, and negative negative 4 is positive 4, which you can take the square root of and get 2. All right, so now that we've addressed that issue, let's go ahead and work on this problem. We observe that f of x is the square root function, and if we replace the x with negative x, we get g of x. Therefore, g of x is a horizontal reflection of f of x. This allows us to quickly graph g of x by multiplying all of the x-coordinates of f of x by negative 1. Okay, let's look at the picture. So the black curve is the parent function, the basic function, the square root function, the one we're starting with, and it has the familiar points 0, 0, 1, 1, 4, 2, which we all should know from memory by now. But if we multiply all of the x-coordinates by negative 1, then, for example, a point like 4, 2 would become negative 4, comma 2. The x-coordinate changes sign, but the y-coordinate stays the same. Therefore, we get the points on our blue curve, such as 0, 0, negative 1, 1, negative 4, 2, and so on, all towards negative infinity the black curve has reflected across or around the y-axis to create the blue curve. All right, putting it all together. 
when comparing a before and after, if the observed change in the equation is a negative sign, which represents multiplying by negative one, then the transformation type you're dealing with is a reflection. And as before, if the change is inside close to x, the transformation is horizontal. And if the change is outside far from x, the transformation is vertical. We are now ready to solve problems from this category.